Welcome to another issue of Optics Rate Debates. My name is Theodor. My name is Masha. And Masha, today we are going to talk about a question which was sent to us by one of our viewers. Yeah. And the question is, what are the most common problems in binoculars lifetime? Yeah. So where should we start? Yeah, maybe let's start with the most obvious one. This is internal fogging or uh, mm -hmm. fungus in binoculars. So um, I would say this uh, happens because of the build quality. So um, more affordable optics binoculars have uh, lower build quality than yeah, premium the, ones. All the seals mm, yeah. wear faster and deteriorate faster because yeah. of the lower quality materials. And then the air comes in. Yes. The water comes water in. comes in and fungus happens. Fungus happens with time. Yeah. First, what you see is when you go out in at low temperatures and you see internal fog. This is the first thing what you see. But then if you're not solving this problem in a, in a year or two, five years, something like that, yeah. then fungus starts to grow inside. Usually it doesn't happen all the time, but usually it also happens. Yeah. So this is something you can't uh, fix at home alone. No. No. So you need to uh, service your binoculars and send them to your manufacturer. And if your binoculars are made in Europe, this is solved pretty quickly. Yeah, it's easy. If it's Steiner, Leica, yeah. Swarovski, Zeiss, Optolit, uh, Noblex, Doctor, yeah. uh, Meopta and so on, they all, they all have services in their factories. So you just send the binoculars back to them or to us and we send the binoculars back to them and they service they call binoculars, they change the, all the seals and purge the binoculars again with uh, dry nitrogen. Yeah. And if your binoculars are made somewhere in, let's say, Asia, so China. Yeah, um, also Japan, it's quite problematic then eh, to yeah. service them. Uh, then it's usually you just have to buy new binoculars, unfortunately. Yeah. Honestly speaking, if your binoculars are below 500 euros, if they are made in China and so on, they will not be repaired yeah. in, in cases like this. Yeah. There are exceptions. There are a couple of brands which solve this problem a little bit differently. Yeah, like Athlon or Vortex. They have mm. VIP warranty, they call it. Yeah, and the Vortex VIP warranty, very yeah. famous. Uh, lifetime warranty. So when something happens to your binoculars, they uh, replace it with the new, uh, the new model. So uh, yeah, their system is quite good because they are not servicing the binoculars. You just yeah. get a new pair. Yeah. Uh, but usually uh, it's the best bet is just to buy high quality European binoculars, then yeah. they can get serviced. Yes. Okay. So let's move on to the next problem. What is also quite common and can happen if the binoculars get damaged, if you drop them on the floor, if you bump with them somewhere, then uh, the collimation can go out of, uh, the, well, the binoculars go out yeah. of collimation, you have double vision. Yeah. You have a separate video about it. That means that when you put the binoculars on, you see that something is not right. Your brains are trying to um, align yeah, both images, images in yeah. both uh, optical barrels. Again, European binoculars can be serviced. Usually binoculars coming from Asia are not able to be serviced, so you need a new pair. And like you said, with Athlon, Vortex and many other American brands, you are also able to get a new pair if yeah. something like that happens. Check our video about double vision. Yeah. Um, what about external housing wear? Yeah, so it's normal to rubber and other materials to wear off after mm -hmm. some time. So um, it's the same again, maybe more premium uh, manufacturers. I know Swarovski and Steiner, Steiner I think. Steiner is really famous about it, yeah. Yeah, so they basically... Um, replace all yeah, the rubber. Yeah, replace all the rubber, yeah. yeah. Uh, why I said that Steiner is famous because their marine binoculars are really, I would say, put to test every and each one of them almost because when you're using them on a boat, yeah. first of all, uh, sea water, salt water comes into contact with binoculars, yeah. then sun, and it really does, I would say, affect all the rubbers outside. More and quickly than with normal binoculars. Yeah, if you have a hunting binoculars, they will not get in contact with the salt water yeah. and they will not be left in the sun for, for days or even months. And they will not wear out as fast. Mm -hmm. But even though, let's say like um, Habicht 7x42 GA binoculars from, from Swarovski, we have examples of them which are 50 years old. And they come back and after 50 years when people are heavy users, you see that the rubber after 40, yeah. 50 years is not the same anymore. And there, Swarovski is still able to, to service them to 
basically get them back to almost new condition. But with Steiner uh, marine binoculars, this is even more often because mm. people bring them back and they are full of salt. Uh, yeah. You see that the sun did their, uh, its worst. And they are known for like 150 or 200 euros. They basically, you get binoculars which are like new. <laughs> Uh, and it's common procedure because all the people in the marine society, they do it yeah. all the time. Okay, um, what about next? Yeah, so we have uh, common problems with ICOPS and bridge. Yeah, so bridge stability. Usually when binoculars are old, it happens that now these binoculars are new. You see, no matter how you, uh, how you grab them and how you hold them, they keep the interpupillary distance the same. Mm -hmm. But with time, it can happen that the central bridge loses its compactness and so the binoculars will just close on, the, them on their own. On yeah. their own. Yeah. Um, again, something quite only can be serviced in, in factories usually, even though some people do try to fix this at home. Mm -hmm. mm, I would say if you have a affordable binoculars where no servicing is available, maybe it's still better that you try at home and fix yeah. it before you just uh, decide to throw them away. But with European binoculars, again, you send them back to the factory and they will repair it. But what about the ICOPS? ICOPS, we have here an example of maybe 10 years old binoculars from Swarovski. We, we just yeah. got them back so that we will send them to service and you see there is no rubber on the <laughs> ICOPS anymore. This is quite common, yeah. Yeah, so um, if something like th this happens, uh, premium manufacturers like Swarovski, you mm -hmm. have ability to order new ICOPS yeah. and they just, uh, how you do just, I say? Not only with Swarovski, also with Leica and yeah. size, you just, you just screw them off yeah. and put the new, new ICOPS on, like yeah. on this, it's the same. So this is not common practice with uh, more affordable models, no. only with premium uh, European brands. I can also show you something. And this is that uh, I would say many professional dealers like Optics Red also have in stock really a lot of this um, eyepieces from different brands. This is only for Swarovski binoculars. So really a lot of different eyepieces for different models. And this is a common procedure. Yeah. You just send the binoculars back and we will exchange the eyepieces we will not even send the binocular back to the factory. Yeah. With many brands, uh, this. But we are talking about premium brands. If you have a binoculars for 200, 300 euros, this is not possible. Yeah. But let's say with Swarovski and size, it's really, really easy. Because eye cups, you you put them on your eyes like yeah. when every time you use them. So uh, I think this part can really damage or wear off after some time. Now. Yeah. And with premium binoculars, it's quite common to use them for 10, 15, 20, yeah. even 30 years. So like this SLCs, which are about 10 years old, at least I think maybe a little bit less, but they are from a really heavy user. Uh, it's a normal thing that the eye cups wear out because yeah. somebody used them five, six times a week. Yeah. And in 10, 15 years, no material is as durable. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's move on to maybe focusing. So yeah. focusing, it's also the same as bridge stability. Uh, there is uh, grease inside. Yeah. And uh, after some time, this grease uh, wears off or how yeah, do I say? Yeah, it becomes really dry. Yeah. And it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, so the focusing is not fluid anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's the same you have to, if you have premium binoculars, uh, their service and maybe f more affordable models. You can just throw them away. Yeah. Uh, what happens, if, especially if you're using binoculars at very different temperatures, mm -hmm. the grease will change its um, uh, properties, physical properties, viscosity and so on. And it can happen that the focusing becomes, becomes really, really stiff. Yeah. People can even break the focus because the grease inside became tough like a stone. It's maybe uh, also dust can, uh, yeah. can get oh, in yeah. with years of use. Yeah. And then, then you hear like, yeah. <laughs> and you hear that something is wrong, like you have sand inside. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about all the problems because binoculars lifetime, it's really, really long. 
mm-hmm. when you buy cell phone, how long do you use a cell phone? Yeah, a few years. A few years. <laughs> yeah. uh, a car, maybe seven years if yeah. you're 10 years tops. With binoculars, 20, 30 years, it's, it's normal. So if you're using, let's say, binoculars for 10 years in desert, it, yeah, it's the, the dust <laughs> and the sand particles can come into the focusing mechanism because normally in years and years of use, yeah. a lot of things can happen. Yeah. Okay, what did we left out? Um, maybe something that happens on the outer lenses, like scratches and... Uh, mm-hmm. When people do this, they take the clothes and... Yeah, improper yeah, cleaning. Yeah, like on the lenses <laughs> and then you see many, many micro scratches which, has, which are unrepairable. Yeah. This is even, even on European binoculars, I know that majority of brands are just saying... This was mm. improper cleaning and they will not exchange the, the lenses. It's too expensive. Uh, do any outer uh, coatings uh, they help with that? Yeah, you have Aquadura, yeah. uh, Swaro Dura and so on, uh, Lototech from yeah, and size. There are coatings which, diamond coat I think from Vortex, which are a little bit more scratch resistant. Mm-hmm. But all in all, if you're really, yeah. <laughs> if you apply force on them, you will you will definitely create scratches. Yeah. Mm. All in all, binoculars don't need any special maintenance, but when you're cleaning them, be careful. There are a lot of videos how to clean them. And th- this is the only maintenance that binoculars need, just yeah. to clean them, nothing else. Uh, and maybe if something goes wrong, still you can send them to service and they will s- they will repair the binoculars, but not if you yeah. make scratches on, on outer surfaces. Yeah. What is also a topic, uh, a lot of times uh, the lens caps get lost. Yeah. <laughs> Again, this is something that you're able to buy as uh, spare parts. You can also check them on our webpage. For many brands, we have these spare parts uh, listed online and you're able to order them. But all, all in all, I think we went m- through majority of problems that yeah. can occur. So what we learned is that uh, premium manufacturers will have your back for many years. True. And yeah. They are not expensive for no reason. Yeah. Because honestly speaking, when you're paying, let's say 1,500 euros for binoculars, and then seven years onwards, they fall on the floor and something goes wrong, you're able to send them back to to service and you didn't waste them. Yeah. With uh, more affordable binoculars, usually when something goes wrong, it's end of the line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think we covered everything. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next debate. Bye. See you.